Italian technology is always something special. A combination of puppy delight from the grace of some solutions and complete confusion from the insanity of others. This concerns many types of vehicles, including of course aviation. And our today's hero is as Italian as it gets. Since today we are getting acquainted with the brainchild of not some eminent giant, for a start I think it will be useful to find out what kind of company is this Technam. Costruzioni Aeronautiche Technam was founded in 1986 by brothers Luigi and Giovanni Pascal. Yes, the letter P in the aircraft indexes comes from their last name. Initially, the company was engaged in the production of spare parts for large aircraft manufacturers, such as Boeing and ATR. But over time, the capabilities reached such a level that they made it possible to think about their own aircraft. Fortunately, the founding brothers already had experience in creating winged machines. The Technam aircraft have long been fairly close to each other. Light two-seater monoplanes powered by different variations of their favorite Rotax engines. In the early 2000s, one of the representatives of this design became a hit. The aviators loved the P-2002 Sierra, and the Technam plant was producing two to three dozen of these flying marvels every month. Having firmly occupied the niche of lightweight single-engine pistons, Technam decided to take the next step. The next step was the P-2006T, their first twin-engine aircraft. So. We are at the Mechikova airfield in the Moscow region, the base of the Aero Region Training Center, from the park of which today I am temporarily commandeering to drive around our today's hero. The Technam P-2006T is a twin-engine, high-wing aircraft with a single tail fin. These are all dry facts, just look at this candy. From the point of view of design, most of the counterparts next to it look like tractors. This likability has a practical meaning, as it is not the goal in itself, but Technam's desire for aerodynamic quality. Meanwhile, I will note that in spite of its cute appearance, the plane is far from being as delicate as it might seem. Its airframe is predominantly metal. This was done firstly, so that the price tag would not be absolutely crazy. The plane is not cheap anyway. And secondly, to simplify maintenance, the P-2006T can work not only from slick concrete runways, but also from the ground. High engine placement and an easily repairable metal airframe come in handy here. The wing of the aircraft is straight, direct along the leading edge, and along the rear the console narrows slightly towards the tip. Mechanization is classic, ailerons and flaps, no slats in the front, only light and a couple of aerodynamic elements. Integrated engine nacelles, two 100-liter or 53-gallon tanks in the consoles, and large winglets. In fact, in comparison to the dimensions of the aircraft, the winglets actually seem huge, but they work. The vortices on the tips are handled quite well, and at high angles of attack, stability is maintained. The tail of the P-2006 is not raised up, and the fin is not very large. It can, for example, go into the shadow of the fuselage during landing. The horizontal stabilizer is also straight, all turning with a trimmer. Simple but beautiful. The landing gear of the P-2006T is one of its features. Tricycle with a front swivel leg, one small wheel on each support. Despite its modest appearance, the landing gear is quite strong and easily holds the plane both on concrete and on the ground. And a nice bonus of the P-2006T, of course, is that the landing gear is retractable, just like the big guys. This significantly improves aerodynamics and makes the plane even more attractive in flight. The plane stands on the concrete of the airfield, not bothering anyone. At first glance, if there are no comparable objects nearby, the 2006 seems much larger than it actually is, as if it is, well, slightly smaller than some Dash 6. Because of this small illusion, the P-2006T is often compared to more powerful and heavier aircraft. But it is actually a baby, 8.69 meters or 28 feet and 6 inches long and 11.4 meters 37 feet and 5 inches wingspan. For example, the Cessna 172, which on the contrary seems to be quite small, is smaller in both dimensions by literally 40 centimeters, or 1.3 feet. And here, for a layman who is accustomed to economic logic, the fewer engines the better, an obvious question may arise. A four-seater airplane with a maximum weight of about 1200 kilograms, twin-engined? 
Do you have nowhere else to put these engines? This question is a topic of eternal debate. On the one hand, the single engine concept is clearly successful. 44,000 Cessna 172 planes are proof of this. But Technam also has a couple of tricks up its sleeve. And so, to the power plant. The Technam 2006T is powered by two 100 horsepower Rotax 912 S3 engines, each equipped with a variable pitch two blade propeller. First thought, 100 horses is not enough, some kind of budget option. In fact, it is, and this is one of the features of our hero that distinguish it from the classics. The Rotax 912 is a horizontally opposed four-cylinder engine with a displacement of approximately 1.2 liters. Compared to popular engines, it is very modest, and this comparison is somewhat reminiscent of comparing some four-cylinder turbo from a Volkswagen Golf with a roaring V6 from a Ford Mustang. The same comparison can be made in terms of power. Rotex engines are low-powered. But yielding in power and displacement, this baby is gaining in other parameters. Rotex 912, in comparison with its colleagues, is a rather young engine, and it is in a number of solutions more technologically advanced. Not to say that it is straight up the newest, but let's be honest, many of its colleagues frankly are dinosaurs. In addition, it was originally created for low power, which removes some of the reservations of modified and derated engines, which were originally more powerful. As a result, we have a light motor weighing about 60 kilograms, quite cheap to buy and to maintain, and having a fuel consumption of only about 20 liters per hour. Moreover, Rotex runs on ordinary gasoline, not on the 100s, F gas or kerosene. Ordinary gasoline from a gas station, which is obviously much more affordable and cheaper. In such a scenario, over a long distance, it may turn out that two Rotex S912 could well compete with one classic aircraft engine. In addition, unification of systems from the manufacturer itself is added here. Technam has been familiar with Rotex for a long time, the guys clearly know how to handle them, and the mass application can slightly reduce the cost. By the way, since we have a twin-engine aircraft, one might wonder about safety. The plane can fly if one engine fails, but with reservations. If the load is small, for example one pilot and a minimum of baggage, the flight continues. But if the plane is loaded, it will still fly, but with a slight loss of altitude. Not critical, under normal conditions the pilot will have enough time to find the airfield and land. You can't fly 90 minutes on one engine, but I don't think Technam applies for ETOPS. These capabilities made Rotex very popular among light aircraft, weighing about half a ton. But in heavier planes, their low power requires some compromises. After all, 200 horsepower on two motors is not a huge figure. The P2006T has a speed of 145 knots, approximately 269 km per hour, and a ceiling of 4300 meters, 14,000 feet. Not bad for a light single engine, but not too much for a twin. Although again, initially it seemed that a couple of small Rotexes won't be able to pull it at all. Lightness and aerodynamics help a lot. But the load does not help. The norm is 4 people, or 280 kilograms, 618 pounds. Under such conditions, the range reaches 1200 kilometers, 650 miles, and the flight duration jumps over 4 hours. The maximum payload is 411 kilograms, 906 pounds. Decent, but it is achieved as you understand due to the half-empty tanks and heavily cut range. The combination of these advantages and disadvantages makes the P2006T a very good patrol and observator, or, which is quite popular, a trainer aircraft. Not very demanding in terms of flight performance, and at the same time still remaining a full-fledged twin-engine aircraft, with a very modest cost, at least for fuel. However, in personal and business aviation, passenger or cargo transportation, I think you can find better options. Well, enough about fiery hearts. It's time to see what this beauty has inside. 
And at the very first attempt to enter the plane we notice a nuance, which still needs to be thought of. The Technam P2006T is a four-seater aircraft, two rows. But there are two doors. For seating on the front row there is one door on the left side, and for seating on the back row there is one door on the right. In fact it is quite practical and allows you to reduce the weight of the aircraft, but intuitively at the first moment it is very strange. Now finally the cabin. It is designed for four people, including the pilot, two seats in the front, two in the back, and behind them a pretty decent empty space to which the luggage goes. The designers did a very good job here. The cabin is surprisingly spacious and comfortable, and it looks great. A bonus is the location of the engines on the wing. The absence of a buzzing propeller on the nose makes the front view prettier, and the plane itself, with a neat fairing on the nose, more elegant. Under the fairing, by the way, it is completely empty, except that at the bottom there is a niche for the front landing gear. The air conditioning system of the aircraft is an overstatement. It is represented by several channels from the surface of the airframe to the deflectors, which work due to the incoming flow in flight. There are no anti-icing systems either. This would add a lot to the cost and it would be too much for an aircraft weighing 1200 kilograms. The onboard equipment is hybrid, combining a small number of analog instruments for critical systems and a glass cockpit. The glass here is part of the Garmin G950 with a high degree of automation of onboard systems control, including a full-fledged autopilot. Functionally this is already a serious machine with which it is quite easy and comfortable to work. Again, for educational purposes an excellent option. In addition, aviators are already cheerfully starting to put a fresh G1000 NXI here, and with it this is no longer general aviation, but some kind of Airbus. The P2006T prototype was assembled at Technam's Capua plant and made its first test flight in 2007. In 2009 the aircraft passed EASA certification and in 2010 received documents from the FAA. By that time, the P2006T had already managed to show itself at air shows in Europe and the United States, so by the time serial deliveries began, people already knew it. The aircraft's capabilities and relative versatility allowed Technum to make several modifications fairly quickly. The P2006T is a standard civilian version, in fact the one we are driving today. The T2006A is a training version, modified to meet the requirements of the Italian Air Force. The P2006 MRI and MMA versions are airplanes that push for more than 4 hours of flying. The first is for naval patrols and the second is engaged in a variety of work in the sky, such as aerial photography. Now Technam offers a universal platform, the version P2006 SMP, special missions platform which can do all kinds of work. The aircraft has modifications to the cockpit and some of the equipment, plus it has a slightly higher speed and range, but otherwise it is identical to the base. There is another interesting modification, however it is made not quite by Technam. As part of the Leap Tech program, NASA is exploring the concept of an electric aircraft and now is creating a flying lab with as many as 14 engines, two of which work as conventional pistons and 12 more are switched on at high thrust modes and have an interesting design. The X57 Maxwell Flying Lab is being created, yes, precisely on the basis of the P2006T. And now we can touch upon probably the main drawback of the aircraft, which however concerns not the flight performance and engineering. The Technam P2006T is pretty expensive. European flying machines in general are not known to be especially cheap, but 600,000 bucks is painful. Yes, many other twin engines may be more expensive, but our twin is not quite their direct competitor. The secondary market here is even more contrasting, but mainly because unlike the same Cessna, of which I repeat there's just an insane amount of all stripes and ages, the secondary market of the P2006T is very modest, the plane is quite new. You can get a 20 year old 172 pretty cheap, but a 20 year old twin you obviously won't find right now. 
This especially affects the position in the American market, where the decent cost of the aircraft is added by import duties, while the price tags of local competitors are relieved of this burden. And here arise questions like, what is the strategy of Technam in general? The main production sites of the company are located in Italy, in Naples and in Capua, and they are establishing another production together with Shenyang Aircraft in China. This gives an impression that their priority markets are Europe and Asia. I will note that there are local offices and support centers in the USA and Australia, but given that large markets often require localization of production, we can say that Italians behave a little lazily there. Although, who knows, it is quite possible that over time we will also see the P-2006 of the American assembly, and then it will start pushing there much more actively. But this is all prediction and sales strategy, and the company knows how to do it. By 2021, Technam has delivered over 5,000 aircraft of various models worldwide. Yes, these are not indicators of the giants of the industry, but I must admit that for a small company with a couple of hundred employees, this is very impressive. And out of this flock, about 600 units are precisely our twin-engine P2006Ts. And for its niche, given the certain specificity of the aircraft, 600 is quite a worthy figure. Pascals, by the way, still rule there. The founding brothers, alas, have not survived to this day, but instead of them, their sons, now cousins, are in charge. Excellent flying! Thanks to the Aero Region Training for providing the aircraft, thanks to Technam for creating this aircraft for us, and thank you, aviation enthusiasts, for watching the video. Like and subscribe to the channel, all the fun continues. And if you want to watch the videos early, see some exclusive behind-the-scenes content or just support the channel, consider joining our Patreon community. Fast flights and soft landings to you.